What up, guys? It's Bookworm Book Club. Yay! July 1st! I am so excited to finally do this, something like this on YouTube and really just get some stuff going. Um, I wanted to start off this month by talking about Divergent! Divergent. Oh, yeah. This book... I love it so much. It's my favorite. Um, I wasn't expecting to like it all that much because the last YA book I read years ago was uh, T uh, Twilight and I hated myself ever since for doing it. Thank God, however, this is not the same thing and it is wonderfully written by Veronica Roth and um, it really, I like that there are shorter chapters because I am ADD and I get distracted easily as we all know from hearing me speak or being in the same room with me, I am ADD. But this kept my fucking attention, and it was amazing. Um, uh, the factions that I mentioned earlier were Amity, uh, Dauntless, Candor, Erudite, Abnegation. And I did it that- I did that by fucking memory! I'm proud of myself! <laughs> Yay! And you follow the story of a girl named Triss. Uh, I'm sorry, Beatrice. Um, and when you turn 16, all these factions- all the faction kids go to school together, When once you turn 16, you do the choosing, uh, you do the, um, you have to take this aptitude test. And the aptitude test will determine what faction you are supposed to be in. Now, you can get a test of, uh, one or two is, is, uh, you know, it is a good thing for you to choose from, but if you have a one or more, or three or more, it, it means that you're divergent. Um, she takes the test. This is going to be a spoiler situation, so if you don't, if you have not read the book before, I'd suggest, um, reading this, coming back, and commenting down below what you thought of the book. But, uh, letting you know at this point, before I continue, that every book club, uh, bookworm book club that I do, there is going to be spoilers. So, enjoy that. Anyway, getting back to the point at hand. They do the aptitude test, and then the next day, they have to do the, um... Uh, uh, choosing ceremony. And abnegation is, you know, people that are selfless, that are help other people. They wear great stuff. They don't, they, uh, don't, they, they, they don't like vanity. They don't have mirrors. They, they reject it, actually. Uh, candor is all about truth and not a black and white situation. Kind of like the judgment of life. Uh, erudite seeks knowledge. And, uh, we'll get to them in a minute. Uh, Amity is all, uh, they're just happy people, and they grow shit, and they're really just, it's a weird, it's like a tribal situation, but it works. Dauntless are the crazy fucks, who are kind of like the police, and, um, I love them so much. I kind of identify with Dauntless because I'm a crazy fuck myself, but also a kind-hearted soul. So, it's a variation of the two. Come the choosing ceremony, she decides that, that she finds out from the aptitude test from this girl named Tori, that she's divergent and that she's hiding and the one faction this bitch picks is uh dauntless which is the stupidest idea in the world um her father um is from uh, being that beatrice is from abnegation and her father if abnegation runs the government her father's in the government at the moment and there are some stories running around that marcus one of the uh fellow members of the, of the government has been beating on his kids um and they faction they factioned out they there were faction transfers to someplace else come to find out that marcus's kid factioned out i wonder why because there were rumors about marcus beating his kids well you know i'd faction out too if i was him but no one knew who he was come choosing day tris slices her thing and there are five bowls of symbols of Dauntless, Candor, Erudite, Amity, and Abnegation. And she had to choose between, her wrists were going between Abnegation and Dauntless. Slices her hand, I'm not, not her wrist, yeah, but you know what I mean. Slices her hand, puts the blood onto Dauntless, and runs like a bitch. Both children, her brother Caleb, had, had transferred into uh, Erudite because he seeked knowledge, even though he was a selfless human being. Beatrice went to Dauntless. Both parents are riddled with up being upset, but her mother says to her clear straight out, I love you regardless. And that was insane. 
Now, here's where the book and the movie differ, because I've seen both. And I have to say, I love the book a little bit more than I do the movie. This is coming from a girl who's only seen the movie first. So, a requirement of Bookworm Book Club, have a hot liquid ready. In the book, you just see her running and running, and she's always, she's had this pining situation for Dauntless, which is the same in the movie. But, the difference is, is, is that, from uh, a big shock in, in the book, was that her mother was divergent as well. And and that was never mentioned in the movie. It would piss me the fuck off. Because that would have been like a connection to her mother in so many different ways that no one else would get. But she does find out that her mother was dauntless as well, which is why the training comes up naturally. She does training, she meets up with four, come to find out that four is Marcus's son through the fear landscapes. Uh, which, if I had to go through an aptitude test to find out what my fucking fear was, let alone the being in Dauntless and finding out what my fear, my, uh, fear landscape was. No, I'm so afraid of heights. I'm exactly like Tobias, aka Four. Um, I, no. I don't like heights. Heights is a horrible thing. Horrible, horrible thing. I think I cried a little bit more in this book than I cried at the movie. Because, um, I'm more emotionally attached to reading than I am to movies. Which is ironic, because my friends... My college friends have a three cry rule, which means when we go to the movies, if there's going to be an emotional scene that I'm going to be attached to, I'm only allowed to cry at certain points of the movie. I cried at Planet of the Apes. I cried at Jurassic World. I legitimately bad. Really bad. I want to take into account now of uh, the roles that were played in the movie for the book. Um, because that's always pivotal for any bookworm to really know the situation. If you can't Here's the thing. Let's use Harry Potter for example. I was very wary of who they were going to pick for Harry Potter. And, and you know, if they were going to pick the right person to play for Hermione and a whole bunch of... And I was a kid. So, when Daniel Radcliffe, Rupert Grint, and Emma Watson were picked, I was sold. Because they were the perfect embodiment of these children. Um, and it really, it really sold to me. So when I read this book... I had no, I, I wasn't sure if, um, Shane, Shane Lee Woodley would be able to play this role, because I, I, everyone who knows me knows I have a problem with Shane Lee Woodley, because I, I had a best friend, no, no longer that anymore, I had a girlfriend that I was very close with, made me watch American, uh, Secret Life of an American Teenager, and I hated myself, because I could not watch this bitch act. She couldn't act to save her fucking life. I kill. I wanted to kill myself. It was... I couldn't do it. I couldn't. And I'm an ABC family girl. I like Young and Hungry. I love Baby Daddy. And for some fucking reason, I could not watch this show. Because of Shane Lee Woodley. Thank God she's grown up. Because... She is... She's... Such a... She was impressive. Impressive! And as I'm... And as I'm reading Divergent... I... As I read Divergent, I re-watched the movie... And I thought to myself, yeah, all right, she can do it. I, I can see that happening. What I was really surprised with was who they picked for four. I forget his name. I Theo James, who played four, um, from what I understand, was in Underworld. Awakening. He was in the last Underworld? Holy shit. And I saw that movie. That's another franchise I love. Um, obviously, he's in Diversion. He's in Surgeon. And uh, the Inbetweeners movie. Never heard of it, but this ought to be interesting. Um, a few movies he's been in. It's about yeah, all those old, almost seven movies. But he's but he's so good at playing four. I've never seen him before, and he's cute. Um, and he definitely embodies the role. Um, I wouldn't expect a kid like this to be so good at what he did, but come on, Ashley Judd played her mother perfectly. Jay Courtney. I need to talk about Jay Courtney. He embodied that role of Eric so well. Jay Courtney has been in uh, 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 Die Hard. He played uh, Bruce Willis' son. Perfect fucking person to play Bruce's son. But he's so good at playing Eric. The menacing look he gives and the cower. And he, you're afraid of him, but, but he looks so good. And Eric as a character, getting to the book, um, was just the perfect manipulating son of a bitch that you just wanted to hate. Him and Max, who was also played by Mackay Pfeiffer, <laughs> what up though? 
that they 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 were a good menacing team and you just wanted to like you hear shit that came out of Eric's mouth and you just want to pop the shit. This is what reading should do to you. Reading should emotionally attack you and just take hold of you. That's what it should have done. And the younger generation, I feel bad for them because they don't do what I do. Me and my best friend, me and my best friend Allie, this is what we do. We we get emotionally attached to shit and we, it's bad. Ray Stevenson plays Marcus, who is um Marcus is you know Tobias's father, and there is a scene in the book that plays so well into the movie, which is the fear Tobias's four fears, his landscape, and his father happens to be one of them black, pit black eyes, and uh, it's not really, you can't really see it in the movie, but you can really see it, and you can really picture it when you're reading The Fear Landscape, and it's, growing up in an abusive household, I kind of connect with that, so it's just like, I feel so bad for Tobias having to deal with that father, and being that, yeah, his mother has died, and his father tried to keep on raising him, but there's no reason to lay a hand on a kid, no matter who you are, and Trish just leans forward and beats the shit out of a situation is awesome. Ultimately, getting back to the book now instead of the movie because that's what we're here for Bookworm Book Club. Ultimately, Erudite has this plan to find the Divergent and leave them out. Divergent means that they don't follow what the factions control your mind to do, so, so to speak. Divergence means that you can think for yourself. Most of the factions leave, every faction lives by this one motto, faction before blood which is stupid in my opinion but then again I don't live in a divergent world and it's very hard for Tris to really deal with that situation she is um she goes it's her brother her mother comes to visit and, but uh, abnegation is no longer allowed on, on erudite campuses um so her mother comes to visit her only and it's just amazing situation to see that bond between mom and daughter still is so proud of her daughter but throughout you know throughout the training and all this you see that erudite is planning something huge come to find out that there is a serum that they are planning to inject to everyone to find uh to put them under um not a hallucination um under a simulation there we go they are you know this is erudite's plan to take over abnegation and take over the government and really lead at their own situation. They are led by Janine and she is the devil incarnate. And Kate Winslet did a very good job of playing that role because that bitch can do anything. Um, it was so, I couldn't believe, I couldn't believe it. Um, to, can, the way the, the serum works that you put under, um, under a simulation and when you wake up, they, they use you as a mindless mindless, a mindless drone for an army. And the ones that do not connect to that, uh, can't be controlled by the, uh, serum, obviously divergent and are obviously killed. Um, if you can't think the same way of the faction, that means you're divergent. So, um, in the movie you see that, that process being handled and they just get shot quickly. It's insane to see that. I was blown away by it. Veronica Roth had me at so many points in this book, you have no idea. The war happens, and you find out that, you know, her mother is a fucking badass. You find out that she's dauntless and dies in the process of protecting her kid. Um, both parents die in the process of protecting their children and their abnegation families, uh, faction. They end up leaving, uh, the, the walls, that perimeter, that defense. They go through, they get on the train, and they leave to go past the fence and to go to Amity where they seek refuge and that is where I am right now uh, I'm reading Insurgent and so far it's so good and I want to kick Peter in the dick um they obviously shut down the program and everyone's out of the serum thank god um and they leave like I said to Amity I'm excited to see what goes down um hopefully I will finish this book in a month and you guys will see August 1st uh, what will happen in Insurgent. That's my plan to bullet through this book. So my plan is to bullet through Insurgent and, uh, really just get it through. So, uh, August 1st, you guys will see my review of Insurgent. And I'm going to watch the movie, too, because I want to. <laughs> I want to see more of Jay, hopefully. Not, not of Jay. Of, uh, Thomas, who plays for 
and he's pretty. But hopefully that's my plan. If, if it doesn't work out, I'll change the schedule to every two months. And you guys will see more of my pretty face. Thank you for watching Bookies Bookworm Book Club. And I'll see you next time. Alright, I have to go do shit. <laughs> I have to go be a real person now and not talk about books. Alright. Bye guys. Eh!